architect and planner, city designer, and it's been a, quite a career, a lot of fun, very interesting, met some incredible people. But as we've moved on and the business has kind of flattened out with this economy, it's given me a chance to do some of the other things I've really enjoyed, and that's to get back into some fine artwork as well as writing. And writing has become something that I've been enjoying more than I thought I would, and it's become exciting because you're able to create stories and writers have, have always been telling their story um, especially in fiction and what I've been enjoying is to be able to create characters create this, the, the ambiance the setting for the story and create the tension that creates the story from the beginning to the end you know it's always fun to have the beginning and it's kind of challenging and you throw something at the at the reader and hope they get excited in the first 20 or 30 pages it'll let them hang in there until you get to the end of the book and at the end of the book you kind of complete it but in that story is a trip and that trip you're taking your reader on and if they enjoy it they'll read it to the end if not uh, they'll find somebody else and the craft that we have and that we continually learn is to keep that road open to keep that travel and that travel the tension that creates the story from the beginning to the end. You know, it's always fun to have the beginning and it's kind of challenging and you throw something at the at the reader and hope they get excited in the first 20 or 30 pages. It'll let them hang in there until you get to the end of the book. And at the end of the book, you kind of complete it. But in that story is a trip. And that trip you're taking your reader on. And if they enjoy it, they'll read it to the end. If not, uh, they'll find somebody else. And the craft that we have and that we continually learn is to keep that road career old writing to keep that travel um, and that travel. My wife and I had set this company up almost 20 years ago and we have planned and designed and worked with some of the best builders and developers in the United States. It's been exciting but as this industry has flattened out especially with the, the current economic times it's given me an opportunity to spend more time on my books. So I, as someone who spent a good life of his scheduling his workloads and you know projects and things, this just became almost another project. And so one way I'm able to to carry it forward is I come in in the morning early, I work and, and write for a couple of hours. It allows me to kind of get settled in. I'm not at home. I'm working in my office. It gives me a little different separation. Um, gets me started and then as the day moves and my clients start coming into the office and my uh, employees start coming in then we start working so it's not so much the separation from the work it's just scheduling it as another project it sounds kind of boring and benign or boring at that point but it isn't it's just but it is another factor and then as and hopefully as we become more successful and more readers uh, like my work, we can expand that, and I can expand that and spend more time. Um, whether it becomes a full-time profession is another matter. I'd love it to be because it's so enjoyable. Are my stories real, or are they based on real? You know, it's interesting. I've written a lot of nonfiction, and it's certainly the first book, G.I. Town, um, the story of a village, and sort of the biography of a village on the south side of Chicago, uh, was all based on real real stories, real people, real interviews, their story, and then I put it together to tell the story of the village. But in my own writing, in the fiction, a lot of it is, uh, they're based on real people. Uh, no writer can say that he writes with the idea of not having real people in mind. I mean, you have to have an image. You, t you may stretch them, you may make them a little bigger than life or smaller, may make them more annoying. 
some writers get even with people. I'm not sure I've done that yet, but it might be interesting. But they're, yeah, they can, and they are based on some real events and real things that you think you saw. Certainly the beginning of uh, Land Swap for Death in the BART station was based on a real occurrence where I was sitting down there and watched a bum wandering around annoying people. Uh, but then the story is different from that point on. Um, in Elk River, the story is very locational based where it's where I grew up in the 50s in the upper part of Michigan during the summers. I know the land well, but the, and the, but the characters are very different than real characters that I knew in family. So it's somewhat biographical, but then again, it's more uh, situationally biographical than it was uh, autobiographical. So the characters, you, you can create them, and it's fun to pick up names. You go, well, how am I going to name this character or that character? So you pick the phone book up, and you start looking for names, and which ones carry a, a panage about it. Uh, um, so you, that idea that you're basing it on real characters is true, but then again, you can, I think, shape their character the way you want them to fit to the story. Characters evolve, they have to. We grow, humans change, we evolve, we deal with everyday situations, we get married, we have kids, we die. We're continually evolving and we're continually experiencing things. So your characters have to do the same thing. Now it's hard to do that maybe in two or three hundred pages, unless you're writing an opus or a history of the family or something. But if you're dealing with a a period of time in a character's life, not like what uh, Sam Spade in a couple of days in a Dashiell Hammett book. Uh, not any different even now with Sharon O'Mara. She's dealing with three or four months during the, during the late winter, and is she evolving? Of course she's evolving. She hates her job. She wants to move on to something else. She's ex-army brat, or ex-army MP actually, and she needs to move forward, and the story keeps pushing her forward and she keeps changing, the people around her change. Uh, I'm very interested to see how I'm going to deal with her in the next two or three or four, God willing, books that we can create out of, out of her character because what will she become two, three, four thousand pages from now? Uh, there's an old writer, John D. MacDonald, with his Travis McGee series, and every book was almost a new revelation in McGee's life as he got older and had tougher times dealing with life. So you have to evolve your characters. I think sometimes when a reader feels that the character, the main character they've gotten to like, it becomes too static, the books become stale and static. So the writer is continually having to push his characters forward, having them age, grow, mature, um, some cases have families, some cases, it, it's just, you, you, I, I really feel you have to keep pushing your character. Why are your books so short? You're only, I've been asked that question, and I'm trying to push the, for the writers out there, is you don't have to write these 120, 150,000 word, 300,000 word magnum opuses that try to tell a story. Um, the, the Omera Chronicles, as I'm calling them, are actually about 60, 70,000 words, which is about 200, 215 pages if you really spread the letting out. The idea is that you can read it in about four or five hours, and I'm calling them flyers coining the term. I've now copyrighted it. No one else can steal it. Flyers, where you go read, you're flying to Chicago, you read for two hours going and two hours back and the book's done. So that's part of the, the fun of writing these is it's forcing me to tell a shorter story, a quick story, sort of a long uh, a novella, but it, I mean that gives it far too much uh, sophistication. So I think uh, the idea behind the flyer is that you can read it in a few hours, you're done with it, we all start a book on vacation, never finish it because it's too damn long. Well, these books are kind of focused on that four or five hours.